All right, there we go. Hey, everybody, welcome to the stream, and I am sorry for the delay. Always a little bit of last-minute tech issue kind of thing going on, but uh, we always do get it figured out in the end. So it's Friday evening, afternoon, where you are. Thanks for joining me today. <clears throat> what I want to do in this video is just show you my Casio watch collection. And I think that's the thing about collecting Casio watches that everyone has the intention, oh, I'm just going to buy one of these, I'm going to buy this one, but it ends up being you have like 17 and eventually you end up buying a case, right? So that's typically how the journey with Casio watches tends to go. But the nice thing is that they're more on the inexpensive side. Like, don't get me wrong, you can find some really expensive models, but in general, they're not super expensive. So it's a lot easier to collect Casio watches than Rolexes or something like that, right? One thing you'll also notice in my case here, I have four blank spaces. So I am looking for four more Casios. This is just gonna be a Casio collection here. So if you have any good ones, let me know in the comments or in the live chat, depending when you're watching the video, and let me know what you think I should get. So what I want to do is give you a brief overview of all these watches and I'm going to show them to you in the order that I bought them. Kind of explain to you why I bought them um, and the, the journey, I guess. So you can see why I bought this one, then this one, then this one, then this one along the way. So I'll tell you about my watch journey a little bit beforehand. I was wearing an Apple watch for a number of years. I liked it, but eventually it just, it got too much. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, man, this notification city here, constantly getting notifications. It just felt overwhelming after a while. So I wanted to simplify. So I ended up getting this guy right here. This was my very first Casio. And I think this is a great first Casio. This is the classic F91W. So this thing here is as basic as it comes. This is kind of the quintessential digital watch when you hear the F91W. Um, it has a crazy lineage too. It was worn by like Barack Obama and Osama bin Laden at the same time. So just kind of interesting how you have these, you know, super powerful people, I guess, from whatever means you look at that and just choosing such a simple watch, right? So it's very cool, but that's what I like about this watch is it just gets down to the essence of timekeeping, right? You don't have notifications, activity trackers, all this kind of stuff. It's a watch. So it does have a few features though. It's not, you know, simply just a time teller. Has three buttons on it. This is incredibly inexpensive, this watch. I believe I paid Canadian about... $26 for this or something like that. So you won't find a watch much cheaper than this. So this button here, this goes between the 12 and 24 hour timer. That's why you go 12 or 24 if you want here. This button here is the light. Now, even if it was pitch, okay, you can see it there, right? But even if it was in a pitch black room, you probably wouldn't see this light that well. The light on the F91W is terrible. Even, even if it's totally dark, you can kind of see it. You can usually see it, but again, it's $26, right? So let's go over the other features and you press the button here. So this has alarm. It has a daily alarm that you can turn off or on. Just one alarm, no snooze or anything like that. And here you can also turn off or on the hourly time signal, the chime, um, if you like that kind of a thing, right? So um, I, I do like the hourly signal myself, but only if it's my only watch because the other ones are synced and so they all kind of do it at a slightly different time, but... Um, I digress. Okay. Whoops. I'm in some sort of mode here now. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing all kinds of stuff. There we go. That's a live video. Um, okay. So we go through our alarm here. Next, it has a stopwatch. So just a very simple stopwatch. Start, stop, I believe it. Yeah. So it has a lap or a split time as well, right? So um, kind of a cool feature to see on something so simple. At least it gives you a stopwatch, something to do, right? And then going back here, that's just back to the watch face. Now, this is totally out of time here. I'm going to have to go back and set this. But this has been insanely accurate because I set the time on this a couple months ago. And it's within three seconds or so of my multiband six watches. So it goes to show just the accuracy of this super, super cheap watch. Hey, Brennan, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for showing up. Appreciate it. So after having the F91W, after a while, I said, yeah, this light... This light's really starting to bug me a little bit. Like the light is terrible on it, right? It's, it's really, really not good. So I went with what I feel is the next obvious choice and that's the Casio F105W. Now, as you see, I gotta grab a quick drink here. So as you can see, when we look at these two watches side by side, they look very, very similar. Um, they're not identical though. It's not just a color thing. The F105W is a little bit bigger overall. It's definitely thicker as well. 
when you look at it. So it, it, you can see it right there pretty good. So it's a thicker watch overall, um, a larger case, but it's still insanely small. I don't have the specs on any of these handy, but this is an insanely small watch. So in a lot of ways, this is very similar to the F91W, and that's why I got it. This button here has those same three buttons. This is going to change between your 12 and 24-hour time. This is going to go in between our modes. We've got an alarm on there, just a single alarm. Same sort of thing. You can do your hourly chime, alarm on or off, or both. And we've got, where is our stopwatch? It's got our stopwatch here. So same sort of thing. I believe we've got a lap time. Yeah, so they call it split on here instead of lap, right? So a split instead of a lap time on that one. And then we go back to the main screen here. Now, this is this one here. Check this out, though. So you can even see that illuminator even in this reasonably light room, right? So you see this is totally different than the F91W. I want to show them kind of side by side, one at a time though. Try to try to shade it a little bit here. So there you go. You can really see that illuminator there, right? So that's just a night and day difference than what you get with the F91W. Show you in the shade there, right? So, you know, you can kind of see the green light. Like it's really, really bad in this one, whereas in the 105W, it's infinitely better, right? So the reason I wanted to get this one, it was still a very inexpensive watch. I believe it was about like under 35 Canadian dollars, um, but it's just an upgraded version of the F91W. So I was happy, happy with this watch for a while, but once again, the Casio bug starts itching, right? So the next one that I went with, this was the first one I went with that wasn't like a cheap watch. Um, this is the first G-Shock that I've ever owned. So this is the Casio G-Shock GWM5610U. When I got this one, it was actually brand spanking new. It had not been out for very long at all. Um, the place that I got it from, I believe they were the first place in Canada to actually get these models. So it hadn't been out very long at all since I got this. And when I first got this one, it took me a long time to decide on this one because once you kind of get down the rabbit hole, you realize there are so many models. Like almost too many you know what i mean it's it's virtually impossible to kind of decide where you're going to get into the lineup but you know i figured a square was what i wanted to get i wanted to get something with tough solar with multi-band six and this one here filled all those boxes even though i have a bunch of g-shocks and um just other casios this is probably my overall favorite one um i just absolutely love this square size and I, I just I like the look and everything. There's just kind of everything this watch has going. Um, I really like. So it has the multiband six, has four buttons on it, um, has auto backlight. The other ones you have to press button. This one you can press a button for the light, or it has the auto backlight, which when you turn your watch, uh, your wrist a certain amount, it just automatically comes on. So this button on the bottom right here, this shows you when it got the multiband six signal. So this this got it last. It looks like. August 31st, so it hasn't got it for uh, a day, right? It gets it every day at 12.03 a.m. I like on this one too how you notice it has the kind of um, bar display for the Friday and the time, but then it has the little dot matrix display for the nine and the two. So it just shows information better in that matrix display. So when you press the button for the first time, you get the world time mode. Now this one, it has five built-in world time slots. Usually it just has one and then you can scroll through them. But this one here, you can pre-select five world time zones. And it also has a time, um, I think they call it the time swap mode. So say for example, one of your time zones is in the UK. And then let's say you go to the UK. Well, you can use the time swap feature on this and it will swap your current time zone for this time zone that you have it on in the UK, for example. And it'll also keep all of your alarms and timers and all that sort of thing. So you don't have to go and reset your alarms and everything. So if you travel at all, that's definitely a cool feature. Next, it has an, the alarm and it has four daily alarms. One, two, three, four. And then it also has a snooze. The snooze goes off. I think it's every five minutes five or six times or something like that, unless you go into this menu here and turn it off. So that's what you want to do is actually turn it off. But I mean, it's there to wake you up for sure, right? And then the last thing that you're going to say here is your signal, turn your hourly signal on or off. Next thing you have is your stopwatch. Now you'll notice with this new module in the top right corner, that's the current time. With the older module, not the 5610U, it didn't have the current time up there. So this one, you can have your stopwatch going and you still know what time it is. Whereas with the older one, you had to go back to the main time scene, which is a bit of a pain, honestly. Um, this one, of course, has your split time, all that kind of stuff. I don't know how much people are doing split times. Maybe it's just me, you know what I mean? But uh, I don't tend to do them too often myself.
Maybe, maybe I should be doing more, but uh, it's got it regardless. <clears throat> the last thing it has is a timer, and this has a proper 24-hour timer. Not all of them have 24-hour timers. Sometimes they're one-hour timer, which I just totally don't get. Um, but this one has a timer, you know, and then it just has a, a nice, reasonably loud alarm. I mean, it depends on the environment. Sometimes the alarm is, is completely loud, but sometimes if you're in, like, a loud environment, there's no way you're hearing it. So it really is an environmentally loud or quiet sort of a thing. Now, the next watch here... When I got this watch is kind of when I started this channel. So one of the reasons I got this watch was to review on this channel. And strangely enough, I haven't actually reviewed it, which is kind of funny. But uh, I have done a comparison video on it. This here is the Casio GA2100, also known as the Cassie Oak. So this is the first one that I owned that has the hybrid sort of a thing. You have the analog sort of time or analog time telling, and you also have digital time telling on it. So um, it gives you option to have both, you know, digital and analog kind of thing, which is kind of interesting. Um, this one doesn't actually display the digital time, I don't think, just the two time zones, but it has been a minute. Oh no, there we go. Yeah, it does display the digital time just right down here. You can go, as you see, well, I can get those hands out of the way just like this here. There we go. See that? Moves the hands out of the way. And then you can see the digital dis display switches to the time. So it's 4.33 and 24 seconds. So when, I, when you press the light and then the mode button, it just moves the hands out of the way so it doesn't block or obscure this digital display. So in the little subdial, it tells you the day of the week. Some people really like that. Um, I like on the next model how it works better, but it is cool. You can just look at it, see the day of the week anytime. Um, and one thing about the digital display, like, I don't know how you all feel about digital displays, but I just find them hard to read. Like they look cool. If you have good lighting, like right now on the video, it comes across well, but where I'm sitting right now, I can't really see that unless I'm kind of like moving my head around. Right. So digital displays are just harder to see in general, but it's going to be lighting dependent if it's hard to see or not. So when we go between the different modes here, you'll see the hands are going to move back in place and they're probably going to obscure it again, right? So this is our international world time here. We can scroll between these buttons here, go between our different time zones. See, it takes a long time to move those hands back and then it's blocking our way here. So <laughs> we don't really want it to do that, but oh well. So we go to the mode, here's our stopwatch. So we do our normal sort of things. Got four buttons on this one. Pretty standard to a lot of G-Shocks, right? Four buttons is, is fairly standard, but some of them have. So this has the split time as well, right? So um, again, if you're doing a lot of stop watching, it's gonna get you there. Now the timer, this watch only has a one hour timer, which just, and now actually, let me make sure here, because the it's the other one I know does for sure. Oh no, this one has, this one has, that's just even, that's even more weird than this one has a proper 24 hour timer. And the watch that this one replaces doesn't. So that's that's really weird that they included a 24 hour timer on this one and then not in its successor. I find that very, very odd. Um, go through our alarm. I believe this has the same four alarms as well as a snooze. No, just, just five alarms. So five alarms, no snooze alarm on this one. That's something I always find kind of odd about Casio watches. And they're all a little bit different. Like, you know, this one here, for example, we've got four alarms and a snooze alarm. This one here, five alarms, no snooze alarm. Like, it's just weird they do these slightly different things in between all their models, but I think they kind of do that on purpose, so there's never one perfect model for you to buy. Like, they're all, they're all slightly imperfect. Just to get you, you know, keep, keep buying watches, basically. But, you know, honestly, this one's probably my least favorite um, overall I just, I'm not a huge fan of the jellyfish kind of clear look myself. The reason I bought it was because I thought it would look the best on video and I wanted to try a negative display watch. But yeah, this just isn't my sort of personal style, I guess. Um, but that's, of course, subjective. Some people might think this is the best one. They only get the clear ones. Um, it's quite comfortable. A little bit noisy as you kind of, but that's to be expected. Yeah, that's to be expected with these kind of bands, right? They are just a little bit noisy. Now, um, it's got quite a, quite a good light on it. I'll show you the light there. Try to, try to remember to show you the same thing in all the models here. You can see the light very good even in the dark. See on this one, I know I missed it on this one here. So yeah, 
So it shows pretty decent. Uh, this one doesn't have the illuminator, but it has a very nice backlight and it has the auto backlight. So you just have to move your wrist on this one to see the backlight. This one here does not have um, auto light. So you just have to press the button. Press that button, that's how you see the light. Now the next one I got here, this is the GAB2100. And this one I got, it just came out. I ordered this um, off of eBay, I think it came from Japan. And so this is the obviously next version of the GA2100, the GAB2100. And this one here, they not only add Bluetooth, but they also add Tough Solar. So that means this one here can sync with an app on your phone. And then that's going to do all kinds of stuff. You can do all the setup of the watch completely from your phone. You can do certain things on the watch, um, sorry, through the app that you can't do on the watch, like setting reminders and setting names for reminders and that sort of thing. But Overall, with the Tough Solar and the Bluetooth, this is a very nice upgrade. Now, it's a little tough to see here. I'll try to hold it a little bit closer. Here we go. So you see on the dial, rather than the days of the week, right now it's communicating our battery level. So that's high, medium, or low. And then as we move in between the modes, you see that hand move, and then that's gonna be world time, stopwatch, timer, alarm. The next one's gonna be Bluetooth if you are syncing with your phone then it's going to show you that it's syncing with your phone on that little subdial. So very cool with the subdial. Um, this one here, I find the dial just infinitely easier to see without having the display rather, without having that negative display. Let's go ahead and get the hands right out of the way so we can see, oops, get the hands right out of the way. Well, I think you have to, there we go, I'm not fully engaging it. So get the hands out of the way so you can see that little sub digital display better. Right now we are in timer mode. In timer mode here, like I mentioned, it's a one hour timer. It's absolutely insane to me that they did that, especially that we just confirmed with the other model that it's not a one hour timer on that. It's a 24 hour timer. So they just decided, ah, you know, one hour is really all you need to time on this watch, which I just, I totally don't get. I want a 24 hour timer uh, like every time, right? So now the light on this one, check this out here. The light on this one is really, really good. I just have to hit it. Oh, I guess the hands have to quit moving. Hands back in place here. There we go. So look at the light on this one here. Super, super bright light. Um, it's it's kind of like a flashlight. Like you can honestly illuminate parts of your room with this light here, uh, which is pretty cool. I do like this one in this yellow color way. I wanted to go with something very different. I have, you know, as you can see, a number of black watches already. So I wanted to get something in a very bright and vibrant color. And then I wanted that positive display after having to watch the negative display and not being super happy with it. Um, I'm not gonna show you the Bluetooth sync, but this one here, even though it doesn't have the multi-band six, it's still going to sync, get the perfect time from your watch or from your phone rather, as long as you sync this up with your phone beforehand. So I would recommend uh, doing that if you have a smartphone, it's just not a terrible idea. Move the hands out of the way so I can show you on this sub dial here. This gives you the option to show a number of different pieces of information in the sub dial. Um, let's go ahead and show you that there. So you can have the day of the week, you can have the digital time, you can have the reminder. So this is where you can put the reminder and you have to do this in the app because you're entering text. You can have the text say whatever you want and that would be really difficult to do on your watch itself. And then you can have here the date. So that's September 2nd currently. I like to usually have probably the date on here, I would say. So let's go ahead, the different modes I'll show you. See, I love the little sub dial moves. So you get the world time here. So you can just kind of go between different time zones here. You can hold this in, you can press one at a time and that will show you the different time zones. I believe it has like 50 or 38. I mean, it's, it's all the time zones are in here, but it's a matter of how many cities can you find your city or just your time zone. Now next we go to a stopwatch. This of course has the, this has both the lap and the split time. Um, now the split time is, is a little different than the lap. Lap lets you do multiple split times essentially, whereas split time lets you do one split time. So um, again, I don't know how many people are using all of the stopwatch features, but at least it gives them to you if you are, right? Going back to the timer, you get that one hour timer. Absolutely criminal, I think. Um, on our alarms, I believe we get four and a snooze, one, two, three, four, five. So this is that same sort of thing. So you just get five alarms rather than a snooze alarm. Um, don't know why they do that, but they do. This one here is, is the very newest one in the collection. You can get this in a number of colors and I imagine they'll have even more colors coming out soon. 
I really do like this watch. I like the I like the black hardware on the buckle. Um, it would have been cool with black buttons here as well, and maybe some black screws, you know, but um, I do really like this watch. This is one I still wear quite a bit. Now, looking at the next watch here, this is, I went back to get another, another of the, uh, the inexpensive models here. This is the Casio W800H. And uh, I just saw this one, and I thought it looked kind of cool. Like, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit of an ugly duckling kind of thing. Like, beside the F91W, it looks huge, right? Like, it looks like a monster beside this one, but it's still a very, very small watch. Like, this is not a big watch by any stretch of the imagination. It's in that same around, you know, 30, sub 35 Canadian dollar price point. But the thing I really like about this watch is I like the display. I like how big the time is. Even if we look at it next to... The 5610, I mean, it has a bigger, it looks like the digits on the time are bigger on this model than even on this model here. So I really like that. It makes it super glanceable when you look at the watch. You can just instantly see the time. You don't have to search for it whatsoever. One thing I do find kind of odd on this one, it's cool that it has, so it says Friday, you get your date, uh, day of the week, you get your date, September 2nd, and then you also get the year. I just always find it funny it says 2022. Like it's, you know what I mean? It's just in case you're, is it 2022 or 2122? I don't, you know, I get confused sometimes. So I do think it's kind of funny that it gives you that. Now, this watch here, even though it's a cheap watch, you notice you get four buttons on it. These two, the F91W, the 105, these each have three buttons, You get, but you get the full four buttons on this one. This dedicated button is for the 24 or 12 hour time mode. You get a light, it has a, a reasonably good light. It's definitely better than the um, F91W. I'm doing my best to show you there, but it, uh, it's from the corner, but it illuminates it completely. Now, this watch does have one very interesting feature. We'll just go through them quickly and then I'll show you. So it has a, a daily alarm, just a single alarm, like with all the basic watches. It's got your stopwatch. See, but I really like just how big the display is and everything. Like, it just is a very, um, I don't know, just a very usable watch in terms of being like a cheap watch kind of thing, right? And then it goes back to, now this here, this is this is one of the first kind of oddball features on this one. I almost forgot about this one here. So this has a dual time zone mode. And as you can see in the bottom, like, if you look at one thing that's cool, like, this is a, this is a cheap watch, but when you're in the alarm mode, it still tells you your time down here. When you're in the stopwatch mode, it still tells you your time down here. So that's more of a high, higher end um, feature on some of their models, and you get it on this cheap one. But one thing that's very weird, so this gives you a dual time zone. Now, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, all of the, I, I think there's like maybe one or two oddball time zones, like maybe, but in general, it's going to be... 44 it's going to be 44 all over the world just a different hour it's not a different minute but when you set this dual time zone you set the entire time so you set the hour and the minute so it's very difficult because you're only seeing 444 down here you don't see the seconds so if you wanted this to be <clears throat> excuse me 745 for example you just kind of have to ma manually match it up as best you can because it lets you put in the full time whereas it should just kind of let you put in the hours so I just find that a really odd feature on this watch. Give me one second here. Clear my throat. Um, now the other really odd feature on this one, this is a very unique feature. I like really interesting. Now let's hope I can remember how to do it. Some of these things, it's like I don't do this every day. I usually like check if I'm about to do a video, but let's see. So this is um, how you select if you want. Let's see here. Now adjust. Okay, that's our hourly signal on. Okay. Now, this is how we would turn our alarm or the snooze. This one actually has a snooze, believe it or not. So you have one alarm, but that alarm can be a snooze. So I was incorrect when I said that earlier. So now everything's off. So alarm, snooze, everything off. But if we go to this mode, and then if we hold this button, I believe it is, no. Is it press it again? No, try one more time. And then if not, I'll just explain to you how it works. Um, is it like this? Let's see. Okay, and then I think we go down here. Okay, so now you see it's this in the bottom right. These are flashing. So what this actually allows you to do is this allows you to set an alarm right now. This alarm would go off on on February 1st, February 2nd, February 3rd. 
you can set this alarm on this watch in an insanely granular fashion. You can set it for today to go off once, or tomorrow, let's say, to go off once. You can set it for tomorrow to go off in snooze mode, or you can set it for the entire month of February. So if you just fill in a month on that first uh, digit there, it'll only do it for that month. And then if you fill in the second digit, that's the date. So now this alarm is going to go off at 4.29 a.m. on February 4th. So kind of an interesting feature, um, just like I say, a bit of an oddball feature here. But if you're looking for a cheap Casio that has a little bit more function, this is a good model. And there's also a way to hack this watch so that you can get a timer on here if you solder something and take it apart. So kind of interesting. I've never done that. Now, this next watch here, this also has a negative display. But as you can see, this is a very different story than this negative display. Like, it's, it's completely different. Like, even with all the reflections, you can still see this display, but you can't see this one. So this is the Casio GBD200. This is part of the Casio Move collection, which is more of their fitness-oriented uh, lineup of watches. So the first thing you're going to notice about this one is it has a really cool look to it. I just, I love this. Uh, I love the strap, big wide holes, more holes than normal as well. So not only does it do a better job fitting you because it's more dialed in, but you get a lot of airflow, which is pretty important. Um, a real sporty look on this one. Great. It has a dedicated light button. So you have four buttons as well as a dedicated light button. I'll try to show you that a little better, right? Very, very good dedicated light button. It has an auto backlight on this one. So this is the second watch in this collection with an auto backlight. But the really interesting thing about this watch as compared to all the other ones, on all the other ones, you turn the auto backlight on or off. Whereas for this one, you also do the same thing, but it's only for six hours at a time. So if I turn this on right now, this would go until 10.48 p.m. and then the auto backlight would be turned off. So you have to turn it on like every day kind of thing. Um, a really weird feature, but I'm sure they did that to save on battery life. I, I mean, at least that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to do anything else. I, I don't like that feature myself, but uh, it does have auto backlight at least, right? So um, this is a bit of a different watcher. This is designed for more of a fitness enthusiast. It's still a G-Shock and everything, but it's designed for like training. For example, it has this dedicated start button here. So just at the home screen, if I press this button, this goes right into a workout. Now, when I say workout, this is designed for running and walking. You can't select biking or tennis or weight training, anything like that. This is designed strictly to log running and walking. And you put your gender, your weight, your height, what hand you're wearing it on, all that kind of thing. So it can calibrate your pace and your step and everything. Um, and it can also sync up with your phone. This one has Bluetooth, so this can sync up with your phone and it can use your phone to better calibrate your distance and all that kind of stuff so it can get better results. Um, but for some people, you won't use the fitness features on this one. It just kind of depends, right? Um, if we go back here, let's get out of this mode. It's not super fast. Like it doesn't have a super fast processor. It's, it's a watch, right? At the end of the day, but it wants us to please wait. I mean, I am waiting. I am patiently waiting. We're, we're, we're alive here, Casio. Like, okay. So now, uh, in this main display here, it gives you a couple different options. This is the one I like the best. It has, you know, the biggest time. But right here, this is your daily step count. I want to hold this up closer a little bit. Maybe my cameraman can help me. Whoa, there we go. Uh, no, just, yeah, there we go. So this shows you your daily step count here. So as you can see, I haven't worn this one today. I haven't worn this one today. So for Friday, it's saying zero. But yesterday I wore it. As you can see, it's pretty much full from yesterday. Now this here, this is a monthly distance. Now one thing I don't love about this this is your monthly workout distance. This isn't your actual monthly distance. So let's say I never logged a workout, but I walked a thousand kilometers this month. This will show zero. So this is only how many workouts you've done on it. So just know that. But it still gives you the time and the date and the day of the week on here, even when you're in this larger mode. Now here, this is a dual time zone mode. So as you see, that's our time in the bottom. The top one I have set to Berlin. So it's telling us it's Saturday. It's the next day in Berlin. It's 1.50 a.m. So uh, some cool screens, all of them very usable, all of them you can see the time very easily as well. <laughs> Go back to the main screen here. Now, this watch has a couple of just weird features, I find. So the first thing, so this is essentially the timer. The timer is like an interval timer. So you can set this up and use it as a regular one hour timer. It's only one hour timer. You can't do a 20, a two hour timer, whatever. Um, 
but this is more designed for like interval training. So if you're doing high intensity interval training or something like that, where you're doing five minutes on, five minutes off, or even if you're doing three minutes on and one minute off, you can set that up in this watch and you can set how many cycles, how many times you want it to repeat, all that kind of stuff. So if you do that sort of thing, this is probably gonna be an excellent watch for you. But if you just wanna use it as a regular timer, then it's just kind of clunky. Um, I mentioned this does have Bluetooth. What was the other part I was gonna mention? It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me sometime. So the timer is a little bit a little bit odd on it. And keep in mind, you can set this on your phone as well. Way easier to set it up on your phone always than doing it in the watch, right? But you can do it in the watch as well, 100%. Now the stopwatch here, this is a weird one. Now watch when I press start. Whoops. Let's press start. Okay. Press start. <clears throat> so our stopwatch starts. And what's the first thing you notice? Well... It only does it in full seconds. So this is a stopwatch that only does it in full seconds. If you're timing something that's gonna take a while, I'm sure that's totally fine, but if you're timing something very, very precise, this might not be the best stopwatch for you. So uh, still let you do a, a lap and all that kind of stuff, split time, um, but there we go. It's like, you know, that's stopwatch is uh, 24 seconds, exactly. You know, I, I just find that a little bit odd, but from what I understand, it's a limitation of the MIP display. Um, so it just can't refresh that fast. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention, uh, I just, I keep remembering and then forgetting. It'll come back to it. Oh, it is. So uh, not only does this have the sound, as you can hear, this has a vibration on it as well. So this is the only one in my collection with a vibration. And one thing I love about this watch is the vibration alarm on it will wake me up. If I, like my Apple Watch, if I wear this at night, this will wake me up, which is awesome. I love that about this. I hate waking up with an alarm. I wanna wake up with a gentle vibrating on my wrist. It's so much more pleasant. Now, <clears throat> this is the activity. So this is similar to that other screen. This is going to have your total distance logged in workouts. So only in workouts, not just your general distance. Kind of important thing to note. Now, the last thing, this is kind of interesting, notifications. So if you have this synced with your phone, this will show your phone notifications on here. But again, they usually have some sort of, uh, you know, asterisk. And on this, it'll show all of your notifications or none. So you can't only get text messages. You can't only get Shopify. You can't only get Instagram, whatever. You have to get everything. So if you get a lot of notifications, it's just gonna be buzzing constantly, right? So it's kind of silly. I really wanna see them get more granular. I only wanna get notifications from this or that. Um, but for example, when someone's calling, you can have this vibrate on your wrist, which is handy, right? So um, a cool feature, just one not everyone's going to use. Just wanna show you the menu here, holding the top left button. So it's it's just got, um, it's got a little more to it than you know a lot of Casio watches do. So you've got world time. If we go to our alarm, for example, so if I want to turn my alarm on for tomorrow, press this button, let's turn that on. And I go back, save and exit, yes. So now that's going to wake me up at 429 tomorrow and it's going to vibrate on my wrist. When I go back to the main screen, you see just at the bottom there, that's going to let us know that's got the vibration turned on and then that's notifying us we have an alarm. So up at the top left, you see that's how many notifications I have. And then that's the Bluetooth, very, very small. Some people are gonna to struggle to see that little tiny five in there. Um, it's, it's not big, right? So it's either kind of on or off rather than necessarily the number. Now we're gonna to get to the last watch so far. I got my eye on a couple more for sure, but this is my most recent one. And it's the largest one in my collection. This is the Casio GW9400, the Range Man. So this is a big dog here. This one has six buttons. Not only is it my biggest watch, it is the most buttony watch in my collection. This has dual holes rather than just single holes in the strap, it has dual holes. So it's gonna be a little bit more secure, a little bit more robust, and also give you a little bit more airflow. One thing I really like about the Rangeman is even though it's huge, it still wears pretty well. It's not nearly as cumbersome and awkward as you think it would be based on specifications only it's actually quite a wearable overall watch. Another thing that's very cool about the Range Band is this is the most functional standalone G-Shock I own. Like this one here, GBD 200, it does some crazy stuff, but you have to sync it with a phone to do some of that stuff or to make it you know, way easier. Whereas this is just a standalone G-Shock. This has no Bluetooth, anything like that. 
This does have tough solar. This does have multiband six. So this syncs with the atomic clock, just like the GW uh, M5610U. This one here is going to get the automatic time. Um, we can go ahead and we can check that. I'll show you the last time I synced. You see that little symbol up here above the PS? That's telling you the last time it got that sync. But we can also see that right here. So that got it says September 2nd at 12.03 a.m. So that's when this one synced with the atomic clock to get that time. So this one just, um, if you're looking to kind of downgrade from a smartwatch, you might want to consider something like this simply because this one gives you just a lot more functions than you get on a lot of them. So with an F91W or a 105, like you're going to be just like telling the time, you're going to be bored. At least this one gives you a few things to look around and do. Now, one thing I really like about this watch is that it has a dedicated stopwatch button right on the front uh, watch face. So when you press this button here, the bottom right, it's just going to start your stopwatch immediately, which is really cool. If you find yourself using a stopwatch a lot, you're probably really going to like that feature. It's got your split time and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there's your split time on it. Stop, reset, Let me reset, there we go. Um, one thing I like is that it has this circular display. So as that's running, you see the circular display running, doing its thing. And that's going to give us different information depending on how we're using this watch. So we'll see that circular display come up more a little bit later. So when we're looking at the main face here, so you're going to see this little graph in the top section. That can be replaced with the day of the week. But this graph here, that's the barometer. What barometers are used for is to measure the air pressure and they're used to help predict weather changes. So um, it's not going to be able to tell you, you know, when it's going to rain or anything, but it's it's able to tell you when the weather is going to, to change essentially. So if this looks like a really good stock choice, if it's going up and to the right, that usually means the weather is going to be getting better uh, or more clear, you know, typically means better. And if it's moving down like a bad stock choice, it's usually going to get worse or less clear right kind of cloudy sort of thing so I like to have the barometer I just think that's way cooler than just having the day of the week you know but you also get of course the date in there and the circular display is going to be keeping um keeping time at the seconds there so really really good light on this one I think it's just a single led on the side but it illuminates it very clearly this one has auto backlight as well so when you raise your wrist it's going to automatically turn on this one has way more features than most of them so I'm just going to go through them click quickly so you get your world time here. Now, one thing that's cool, I'll try to show you in that little zone there, that shows you the difference. Think of that as a 24 hour clock. And that shows you the difference from between when your time is and the time zone you're in. So you see that one that remains constant flashing, and then you see the one that's moving. So that's giving you just a visual sense as to what your time zone is, as well as the time zone that you're looking at. Just cool, and I like the way that they utilize that other display as well. So the next modes are stopwatch mode. We already saw that. Next, we have our timer. This gives you a proper 24-hour timer, just like you'd expect. I love that it has the multi um, sort of section display there because it shows your current time the whole time because that's important. Then you can leave it on your timer, right? Because you can still see the whole time. You don't need to go back to the other face if you don't want to. Next, we have our alarm. Whoops, wrong button there. Easier to do this, uh, easier to do this when you can see it. <laughs> so we have our alarm there, one, two, three, four, as well as a snooze alarm. Then we can turn our hourly signal on and off. Now this is one of my favorite features, sunrise and sunset. So this is telling us the sunrise today is at 6.30 a.m., the sunset's at 7.53. So if you get up early or just like to know when the sunrise and sunset is, that's a very cool feature to have. But then you can also just hold these buttons to see this at any date in the future or the past. So I can say, well, what about on, on you know, uh, October 14th? Well, October 14th, it's going to be at 7.32 a.m. And then the sunset's going to be at 6.24. Ooh, it's depressing. So a uh, very, very cool feature. I love that myself. Next is the recall. Now, the recall is you can save essentially a moment in time in here. So if um, we're going to look at the ABC settings, so that's your altimeter barometer compass. So you can save a compass reading. You can save a temperature reading. Um, a handy feature comes in handy with the compass, but it's cool that it gives you that ability to do, like if you need to remember a time or what the weather was like or barometer pressure or something like that. Also tells you your minimum and maximum altitude, which is very cool. And then it also, oh my, kind of mustache here, getting my nose here. And then it also tells you your total 
ascent and descent. So if you're like an outdoors person, if you do a lot of hiking or climbing and stuff like that, you're probably really going to like this. And the last thing is the received, when that received the time. Now this other button here, this is the ABC button, and this opens up your other sensor. So we go here, this is our barometer. All right, just give me um, one sec. Okay, so this is our barometer here. So that at the bottom tells us what the pressure is. This thing is really, uh, really giving it to me here. <laughs> tells us what the air pressure is as well as the barometer reading, and that also tells you your temperature. So a very cool um, feature to have on a watcher. It tells you your temperature as well as the barometer. Next, it has an altimeter. So this is going to tell us your altitude and changes in altitude here. Um, you can show a differential change if you're doing like a hike. Start at the bottom, reset that, see what the climb is, right? And the last setting is a compass. So this has a compass. Um, you can use that to navigate. And what you can also do is you can set a bearing in here. So you can set, okay, 198 degrees, and then you can use that to follow and help get you home, right? Very, very cool feature. You use the circular display, and that helps act as the compass. You see that kind of moving around, showing you north, showing you where you're oriented. Very, very cool feature. And um, if you're an out, like I say, if you're an outdoor, let's zoom out, please. If you're an outdoors person, the range band is probably the very best choice for you. So there you go. That is my my humble Casio collection. Started here, ended up here. Four more slots. Definitely going to fill these up. If you have any good suggestions on what I should add to my Casio collection next, I would definitely like to hear that. But I really hope you enjoyed checking out my modest Casio collection. And as I upgraded, I will revisit this video. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you again soon.